Come, Cap. Come on. Yes, you're quite right. I should be getting on with all those letters to the children. <laughs> now, though I first told Cousin Stephanie how little Lucy Carr first encountered Mrs. Tiggywinkle, I really think it only fair that Lucy should see how it all turned out. So, I shall instead send Cousin Stephanie the latest news of Mr. Jeremy Fisher. I'm sure little Lucy has many happy memories of our mutual friend, dear Mrs. Tiggywinkle, from whom, in fact, I first heard what had befallen that unfortunate frog, Mr. Jeremy Fisher. Once upon a time, there was a little girl called Lucy, who lived at a farm called Little Town. She was a good little girl, only she was always losing her handkerchiefs. Oh, where is it? It's not in this pocket. Definitely gone. I've lost my pocket handkin. That's three handkins and a pinafore. Oh, dear. Have you seen them, Tabby Kitten? Sally Henny Penny, have you found three pocket handkins? Oh! Well, that wasn't very helpful. Was it, Tabby Kitten? Not in here. Oh, where can they be? I walked down here the other day with Miss Potter. Perhaps if I go the same way, they must be along here somewhere. Someone? Um, excuse me, sir. Oh, oh, bless my soul. Have you seen my pocket handkins? Or even a pinafore? I'm afraid not, young lady. Thank you, sir. I shall have to keep looking then. Sorry, I can't be of more help. Eh, what? Mama is not going to be pleased. Well, uh, best of luck, my dear. Goodbye. Whatever would I be doing with pocket handkins? Oh, bother. La, la, la. Oh, what's that? I'm sure I can see some little pieces of white. They might just be my lost handkins. Good 
goodness. Who could have put such a tiny bucket there? It's no bigger than an egg cup. Oh! And look at those tiny little footmarks. They must have been made by a very small person. Oh, yes, if you please, them. My name is Mrs. Tiggy Winkle. I'm an excellent clear starcher. Please, them, do make yourself comfortable. It is rather warm in here, I know. Thank you, Mrs. Tiggy Winkle. <laughs> What's that thing? That's not my pocket handkin. Oh, no, if you please, them. That's a little scarlet waistcoat mm. belonging to Cock Robin. <laughs> No, no, that isn't my penny. Oh, no, if you please. That's a damask tablecloth belonging to Jenny Wren. Look how it's stained with currant wine. It's very bad to wash. There's one of my pocket handkins. <laughs> and look, there's my penny. There. Fancy that. They were there all the time. Well, I knew I'd got them somewhere. I'll just put the iron over them and gother them. Oh, thank friends. you, Mrs. Come T. You Winkle. Well. Now, where did I leave my gothering? Now, who could that possibly belong to? That's Sir Isaac Newton's. Not that your mama would wish me to be discussing gentlemen's attire with you, if you please them. <laughs> There. Oh, that is lovely. Another of my specialities, if you please them. <laughs> now then, just give me a moment. Goodness, what are they? They seem to have fingers instead of feet. Or perhaps they are gloves. Oh, that's a pair of stockings belonging to Sally Hennypenny. Stockings? Look how she's worn the heels out, scratching in the yard. <laughs> She'll very soon go barefoot. Why? There's another handkerchief, but it isn't mine. It's red. Oh, that one belongs to old Mrs. Rabbit. And it did so smell of onions, I've had to wash it separately. What are these dear, soft, fluffy things? Oh, those are woolly coats belonging to the little lambs at Scalgill. Do their jackets take off? Oh, yes, if you please them. Look out the sheep oh, yes. on the shoulder. This one's marked for geese, Gaff, and three that come from Littletown. And what are you doing now? I always has to starch these little dicky shirt fronts. They're Tom Titmouse's in his most terrible particular. How smart. There. Now i finished my ironing. <clears throat> I'll just hang these up to air. And I'd take it very kindly if you would hand the things up to me. Of course. Thank you, my dear. Dear me, what happened to this? Now, there's a story. As I heard tell, young Master Peter had Ooh. a narrow escape from Mr. McGregor's garden. Help! Ah! Mr. McGregor! Stop, thief! Come back here, ya wee pest! Ah! Lucky to get out with his skin, by all accounts. Stop but the this. jacket was left behind, and what with the rain and all. Well, I does my best. Look, even the buttons are gone. Great. Then Mrs. Tiggywinkle and Lucy sat down to take some tea. And the last I heard, all through Mrs. Tiggywinkle's gown and cap, there were hairpins sticking Lucy's wrong end out, so that Lucy didn't like to sit too near her. I wasn't expecting a visitor this afternoon. Now, I always slip the key in under here, and we'll be off. 
<laughs> now we'll go and deliver the washing. Where shall we be going first? Well, if you please, um, down in the wood below is the big fir tree, so we shall call our Mrs Rabbit first. I hope she can match those buttons. Seeing as it's not the first time, nor yet the last, I'm quite sure Mrs Rabbit keeps a job. Then away down the hill trotted Lucy and Mrs Tiggywinkle with the bundle of clothes. Hello, Mrs. The very first little animals they met were Peter Rabbit and Benjamin Bunny. Hello. Tell you, Mama, you, I've done my very best with the jacket, but Thank as you, you can see... I will, Mrs Tiggywinkle. And all the little animals and birds were so very much obliged to dear Mrs Tiggywinkle. So at the bottom of the hill, there was nothing left to carry except one little bundle. And that belonged to Mr. Jeremy Fisher. Mm. What will they get up to next? Mr. Jeremy Fisher, a most elegant and gentlemanly frog, lives down by the lake. I do believe I saw him fishing when I was searching for my handkins. Oh! Dear me, do take care, Mrs. Diggy Winkle. Ah, I'm not as young as I used to be. Mind how you go, Miss Lucy, with your clean boots. Water and mud everywhere. Don't know how it can be. So, there, a gentleman has a right to live how he will. Gooey! Mr. Jeremy! Ladies! Ahoy! I was just about to leave your clean washing and collect from the porch as usual, Mr. Jeremy, sir. Ah, yes. I mean, no, dear lady. Afternoon, ma'am. How do you do? Afraid I have some rather dirty linen here in this basket, um, so as not to muddy your uh, gown. In the basket? Mm -hmm. Bless my soul. Oh, dear mercy me, Mr. Jeremy. Uh, um, oh, little mishap. That is to say, um, well, n not so little, really. More of an accident. Um, uh, very nearly fatal. Skin of my teeth and all that, don't you know? Mercy me, Mr. Jeremy. What have you done to your poor fingers? Oh. Well, they're the very least of it. Oh, Mr. Jeremy. Much worse happened than a few scratched fingers, I assure you. A really frightful thing it would have been had I not been wearing my Macintosh. It's a tale that hardly bears telling. In fact, I still feel a little faint at the recollection. And yet the day had started so well. But let me start from the beginning. Ah, nice drop of rain. Be good fishing today, I should wonder. I'll get some worms and catch a dish of minnows for my dinner. Five fish. I'll invite my friends, Mr. Alderman Ptolemy and Sir Isaac Newton. The Alderman, however, eats salad. Now then, um, uh, Macintosh, ah, uh, galoshes. Mm. Now, where did I leave? Um, Thought about sandwiches. I know just the place for minnows. Mr. Jeremy settled himself cross-legged and arranged his fishing tackle. He had the dearest little red float. His rod was a tough stalk of grass. His line was a fine, long, white horse hair, and he tied a little wriggling worm at the end. The rain trickled down his back. 
and for nearly an hour he stared at the float. Mm. Mm. This is getting tiresome. Oh, I foresee, I fear, an adjustment to the dinner menu. I'll eat a butterfly sandwich and wait till the shower is over. If I could recall exactly what provisions I have in my larder... <laughs> oh, you beastly creature! What a nasty, underhanded thing to do! Dear me. I trust that is not a rat. Oh, is there no peace to be had anywhere? I think I'd better get away from here. There's someone. Excuse me, sir. <laughs> oh, bless my soul. Have you seen my pocket handkins? Or even a pinafore? I'm afraid not, young lady. Oh, well. Sorry, I can't be of more help. Eh? What? Mama is not going to be pleased. Goodbye. Whatever next? Dear me. <laughs> Whatever would I be doing with pocket handkins? <laughs> and pinafores, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> A minnow. A minnow! I have him by the nose! Hooray! Ow! Oh! Oh, dear, no! Oh! My goodness! Oh, no! Ouch! What are you doing on the end of my line, Jack Sharp? Ouch! Get off my boat this instant! Ow! <laughs> impertinent little rascals! Such good friends. One cannot sit them down to butterfly sandwiches. They do expect rather a good table. Mm, if only I could remember what I have in the pantry. <laughs> Grasshoppers. Just the thing. I dare say I can find a bit of lettuce for Alderman Ptolemy. But... <laughs> to see the light of day. Never has the air smelled so sweet. Oh, God. Oh, what a mercy that was not a pike. Oh. 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 Oh, oh my favourite rod. My basket. My only pair of galoshes. Gone. All gone. Oh. No, it doesn't much matter, but I'm sure I should never have dared to go fishing again. Just look at my best Macintosh, all in tatters. Oh, mercy me. It was a nightmare. I assure you, truly frightful. Ah, oh, ahoy! Oh, Miss Lucy, here are Mr. Fisher's guests. We must be on our way. I'll do my best with your things, sir, but I can't promise they'll come up like new. Thank you. Mrs. Tiggy Winkle. No, I can rely on you, ma'am. Good evening, Sir Isaac. Mm -hmm. 
Good evening, Alderman. People. Evening, ma'am. Uh, very pleasant. Indeed. Good evening, Alderman. Good evening, Sir Isaac. Ah, oh, evening, Jeremy, old chap. But how kind, uh, how very thoughtful. Though I have remembered you only eat salad. Goodbye, Mr. Jeremy. Goodbye, Mr. Jeremy Fisher. Come along now, Miss Lucy. Your mama will be looking for you. She'll have your supper on the table. So. Uh, how? It's a long story. <laughs> I'll save it for the port. Per perhaps we might take a glass of pond wine with our roast grasshopper and ladybird sauce. There, now, Miss Lucy, dear. Here's where you go your way and I go mine. Please remember me kindly to Miss Potter, if you should see her before I do. And I dare say we'll meet another day. Good night. But, mm? really white Good night. Clean. But where's your cap? Your shawl? Your gown? If I didn't know better, Mrs. Diggy Winkle, I should think that you were nothing but a hedgehog. But then how could she have found three clean pocket hankins and a penny pinned with a silver safety pin? And besides, I have seen the little door into the back of the hill. And besides, I am well acquainted with Mrs. Tiggywinkle, as you very well know. <laughs> 